Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, opened the Quran with uh, Surah Al Fatha, and then right after uh, Surah Al Fatha, He gave us uh, Surah Al Baqarah, which is you know, the longest uh, Surah in the Quran that contains a lot of, uh, a lot of information, a lot of uh, rules and regulations that helps us um, contain our lives, that help us you know, carry our lives uh, forward within this life in a way where we can um, uh, you know, uh, help ourselves be in a steady movement towards paradise and towards uh, Jannah, inshallah, at the end of the day. And within Surah Al-Baqarah, there are a lot of lessons, there are a lot of stories that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us to help us you know, fulfill that duty towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and towards our communities and towards our people uh, that, that we see in a, on a day-to-day -day basis. And then there's this one story um, that the surah was named after, which is uh, the story of Al-Baqarah. The, uh, the story starts in, in verse 67. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ مُوسَىٰ لِقَوْمِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَن تَذْبَحُوا بَقَرَةً قَالُوا وَتَتَّخِذُنَا هُزْوًا قَالَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ أَنْ أَكُونَ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ And, and the, 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 uh, the story behind these verses, um, scholars say that you know, the, the, the people of, of Musa alayhi salam at that time, um, there was a man that was murdered, or he was killed, and nobody knew, why don't we ask Musa alayhi salam, he may know how to deal with the situation. So they came to Musa, and they said, oh Musa, why don't you ask, um, you know, uh, you know, find find a solution for us. So he came back and he said, uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala tells you to slaughter a cow. And the first response was, Are you mocking us? Are you making fun of us? And he said, "Audhu billah." You know, this is not really my 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 intention. So after he tells them what they need to do, they come back and says and say in verse uh, 68. قَالَ ادْعُ لَنَا رَبَّكَ يُبَيِّنْ لَنَا مَا هِي قَالَ إِنَّهُ يَقُولُ إِنَّهَا بَقَرَةٌ لَا خَارُضٌ وَلَا بِكْرٌ عَوَانٌ بَيْنَ ذَلِكْ فَفَعْلُوا مَا تُؤْمَرُونَ So Musa alayhi salam, after they ask him, go ask your Lord, what is this cow look like? You know, give us some description of this cow. <coughs> then he gives them some more description. He says, you know, this is not a, a, a very old cow, and it's not a very young calf. You know, somewhere in the middle. Do as you're being told. They come back for the third time and say, Came back and said, ask your Lord, what does this cow look like? Or what color is this cow? He said, you know, it's, it's a nice bright color. If you look at it, it, it kind of gives you, you know, that, that nice warm feeling. They came back the fourth time. And they said, So they come back in the fourth time and ask, Well, ask your Lord to give us uh, more description. And then he come back and also gave them uh, uh, more description. says, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes back and gives them more description about the cow being uh, you know, healthy, not doing a lot of work. And they come back and said, okay, that's fine. And they did it. And they said, And they almost didn't even do this, uh, this command. And then the, the, the story uh, continues in verses 72 and 73. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands Musa alayhi salam to tell them that, you know, take part of the scab that you just slaughtered and then, um, you know, uh, uh, hit or, you know, kind of uh, put that, some of that part of that dead person. And then he woke up, told them, or you know, uh, had life put back into him, um, told Musa and the people who killed him, and then went and, and died again. So we look at you know the verses or the, the story behind um, uh, or the story, the verses behind the story. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala concludes in verse 74 and says, "Thumma qasat min ba'di dalika fayyak al-hijarati aw ashadu qaswa." 
I said, and after all of these uh, questioning, all, all of this, what you've, been, what you've gone through, your hearts have become so hard like stones, or even uh, harder. So when we look at some of the lessons that we can pull out of the story, the first thing is that they took what their prophet told them as being mockery. They went and asked him for help, and then once he told them, this is what you need to do, they said, are you mocking us? Are you seriously asking us to do this? We came to you asking you for help, and then you're telling us to slaughter a cow. Now hold, up, hold, hold that thought for a second, we're going to come back to that later. The second thing is that every time they asked, they said, Ud'u lana rabbak, ask your Lord. They never referred to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as our Lord. They never said, ask our Lord, Ud'u Rabbana. They said, no, ask your Lord. And then the second time, ask your Lord, and ask your Lord, and ask your Lord. They didn't want to have that association with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They didn't want to have to deal with this whole situation. They said, Ud'u lana Rabbak. Ask your Lord. This is you and Him, and then this is us. So when we look at all of those things, we can't help ourselves but think how close that story to our lives nowadays. Sometimes we look at some of the stories of the Quran and think, well, this happened to people from back then, this happened to specific nations, this happened to specific uh, groups of people. But then in reality, when we really look at it, some of these stories apply to our day-to-day -day lives. We can start looking at the Quran, at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made mandatory for us to follow. And those are plenty. And yet we continue to argue, how much of it do I really need to do? I mean, we know we have the basic five daily prayers, right? Five daily prayers, we have to do them, no question about it. Now we start questioning, well, do I really have to do it at the masjid or can I do it at home? You know, if my masjid is 20 minutes away or if my masjid is 15 minutes away from my house, can I do it at home and would that be considered a, you know, a, a, a salah in a jama'ah or not? If I do it with two or three people at my house, does that, you know, consider the same situation as me doing it in a masjid or not? Um, we look at, you know, Barr uh, al-Walidain, having that relationship with our parents or obeying our parents. And what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُهُ, ولا تشركه بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا After worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, then you have your parents that you have to deal with. You have your parents that we have to do our best to make sure that they're happy and they're satisfied with us and they're comfortable. And they said, وَقَدَ رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُ إِلَّهِ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mandated that we do not worship but Him. And then, after worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to go back to the parents. When a man asked the Prophet alayhi wa sallam, أَيُّ الْعَمَلِ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ قَالَ الصَّلَاءَ عَلَى وَقْتِهَا When a man came to the Prophet and asked him what is the best thing to do, he said, doing the prayers in time. And then he said, then what? And then he told him, then بِرِّ الْوَالِدِينَ Then following that, or doing whatever we can uh, for our parents. Now, think about that for a second and how many times do we find justifications on why we don't have time for our parents? Our work, our children, we're busy, we have to do this, we have to do that, we have errands to run. Sometimes we barely call them once a day or once a week. But we don't even see them. We go on months and months or years without seeing them or talking to them. And subhanAllah, we get to, to justify those things because we continue questioning what we need to do. Whether it's a mandatory thing to do, whether it's a farida, or whether it's a sunnah. I mean, these two farad that we talked about, whether it's being the salah or being, you know, burr al-walidin, are just two examples. Pretty much almost everything we deal with, we tend to question anymore. <coughs> the 
the Prophet said, He said, What I have told you to avoid, he said, Avoid. Then do as much of it as you can. And then he says, and he follows this hadith with, فَإِنَّمَا أَهْلَكَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ كَثْرَةُ مَسَائِلِهِمْ وَاخْتِلَافُهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنْبِيَائِهِمْ What have destroyed the nations before you, that they questioned everything their prophets have told them. They've questioned, they've, they, they, they questioned what they were told, and then they changed what their prophets or the path that their prophets set for them. If we have somebody from the fire department walk into the store right now and say, there's a fire, I need everybody to walk out that, out that way, what would we do? We would get up and everybody would leave running that way. Because we have a person who we believe is knowledgeable enough that we trust that when they tell us we have fire, this way, we run this way. When they tell us that's the safe way to go, that will be the safe way that we would go. We go to the doctor and the doctor says, you're sick and you need to take this medicine. This is prescription. You take it three times a day or you take it two times a day, one time in the morning and then one time at night. You take it with food until the pills I give you run out. How many of us don't follow that prescription? <clears throat> How many of us in the right mind will take, will take that prescription and say, well, you know, I know the doctor said I have to take it in the morning and at night, but I think I know better, and because I'm busy at work, I'm just going to take them both in the morning, or both at night, or just take one pill, or maybe not take it at all. <clears throat> The Prophet ﷺ is even better guidance for us than this. But yet, we continue arguing. We continue debating of, do I need to do this or, or do I not? We came to the point where we say, okay, so, you know, Sunnah is, 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 is a broad topic. <clears throat> so there is what's mandatory of Sunnah. There is what's, you know, preferred of Sunnah. And there is what's stuff, you know, the Sunnah that if you do it or don't do it. And, and we're just, you know, categorizing everything just so we can justify for ourselves what is good and what is not. And this goes across the board on every single topic in Sunnah. <clears throat> the Prophet ﷺ told us, what I've told you to avoid do, or what I, what I told you to avoid, avoid, and I have commanded you what I've told you to do, do to the best of your ability. If you can do it, do it. That's fine. If you can't, put it aside. Move on to the next sunnah. Sunnah is our comprehensive way of living. How we eat, how we drink, how we sleep, how we work, dealing with our neighbors, dealing with our parents, dealing with our friends, we're siblings, we're children. How we talk to people, how we sit. It's a way to help us be better people. <clears throat> so let's do a little bit of questioning. Let's do a little bit of why and a whole lot more of let's start practicing. You know the people of Musa when they, when when he was first uh, when he first told them you need to slaughter a cow, they said at the Huzwa, are you mocking us? How many times we look at certain things in Sunnah, we look at certain things in Quran and say, no, 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 this doesn't apply anymore. This is from, you know, this is a 1,400-year-old uh, 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 sunnah or something that was applicable back then and is not applicable now. Can I eat something or not? You know, the people, or those people, this group of people that kept questioning Musa alayhi salam, ud'u lana rabbak, ud'u lana rabbak, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first told them, find a cow, Slaughter it, and that's it. No restrictions whatsoever. Zero. But they made it difficult on themselves by saying, well, give us a little bit more description. Well, you know, what color 
is the cow? Well, you know, we're still not sure. Give us a little bit more description until some of the stories or some of the scholars say that, you know, that cow cost him so much money, so much gold in its weight, because they wanted to make it difficult on themselves. How many times do we make this life difficult for us? Islam is very easy. Islam is very simple. We don't need to be concerning ourselves with anybody around us but ourselves. How much of the sunnah am I following? That really should be my only and sole question that I keep asking myself. I don't care what anybody else does in their life. Sure, I'll advise people, we should advise people, we should give them our best intentioned advice. But at the end of the day, am I following sunnah or not? Am I raising my family right or not? Am I treating my spouse right or not? Am I treating my parents right or not? How am I dealing with my neighbors? How am I dealing with all the people that I know? Because at the end of the day, we're the only ones that are going to be judged. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف خلق الله سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه. Dear brothers and sisters, Allah سبحانه وتعالى says towards the end of سورة البقرة. He concludes almost at the end with a with a verse that says آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون. That the prophet had believed in what Allah سبحانه وتعالى has given him and the believers. He says, كُلٌّ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ لَا نُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ أَحَدًا مِنْ رُسُلِهِ He said, everybody believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the angels, the books, and the messengers. And then he says, وَقَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا We have heard and we followed. We heard what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet told us, and then we followed, we obeyed. We don't have to be perfect day one. In Surah An-Nur verses 51 and 52, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا كَانَ قَوْلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذَا دَعُوا إِذَا دُعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَهُمْ أَنْ يَقُولُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا Believers, when they were told to follow, when they were told to follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His messengers, or His messenger, they said, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا We heard and we followed. And then he says, وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ And those are the people that truly win at the end of this life. They heard and they followed. They didn't argue. They didn't debate. They didn't say why. If you can follow a sunnah, do it. If you can, just don't. Leave it aside. Go to the next one. If there's something easier for you to do, do it. Practice. At the end of the day, we live, what, 50, 60 years, 70 years, 80, 100? What's the highest recorded? 115 years? 120 years? So we're either halfway through our lives at the beginning, or towards the end, assuming that we're going to live that far. So, if you want to take one main lesson out of this whole surah, or out of, her, out of this whole uh, story, and these few verses, let us not be like those people that questioned the Prophet, and questioned, and questioned, and why, and why, and give us more, and give us more description, and give us more detail. Let's be part of the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes and says, وَقَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ الْمُفْلِحُونَ we, we, we heard, we followed, and now we are part of the winners. Because at the end of the day, there's nothing that we should desire out of this life other than a passage to the hereafter. A passage to the where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can look at us and say, yep, you did your due diligence, now your place is in paradise.